Hello everyone, welcome to the video, I'm Shakes. Today, I'm gonna be going over 10 reasons why you're stuck at low ranks. Now, last week, I made a video about how to get into Diamond because I recently got into Diamond quite a few times, so I thought, why not pass my information, my knowledge, knowledge on how to get into Diamond to you guys? But a lot of you guys in the comments said, that's not exactly my problem. My problem is getting out of Iron, Bronze, Silver, Gold. What? what how do I get out of these ranks because it feels like it's an entirely different game of Valorant? And it really is. So because I'm a man of the people, I thought, why not give you guys 10 reasons why you're stuck at low ranks? It sounds like a Watch Mojo title, I'm sorry. But if you had a low rank and you're not satisfied with where you are, then one of these reasons is definitely going to describe one part of your gameplay, and if you just improve on it, you're definitely going to be able to get out and get into the higher ranks that you might want to get into. So without wasting any more of your time, the first big reason why a lot of players are stuck at low ranks is that they just don't understand movement and weapon inaccuracy. Now, Valorant functions a lot different from most other competitive shooters. It's not anything like Fortnite, it's not anything like COD, it's not anything like Rainbow Six, which are very popular games that you might have transitioned from and gotten into Valorant. It's nothing like those games. In other words, one of the biggest things that kind of dictates how the gameplay plays is movement and weapon inaccuracy. So if you're running around, it's not going to be very accurate. This game is based on standing still so your gun is accurate and then beginning firing, which is a massive difference from people who are in COD or used to always strafing around when they're shooting in Fortnite, the same thing, you're always strafing when you're shooting. All those kinds of games you might have transitioned from. In Valorant, whenever you're shooting, you're generally going to want to be standing still and you always have to pay attention to how accurate your weapon is. And how you can track this is by turning on movement and accuracy in your crosshair settings. And this might look a little bit weird. Your crosshair is going to be moving all over the place, but it's going to be very accurate with how accurate your gun actually is and if you just play with this inaccuracy for a little bit you're gonna have a way better idea of how to actually play and how to actually you know strafe and then stop and then shoot and then that's just gonna make your gameplay way better if you are stuck at a low rank so many players at the low ranks don't fully understand this or they understand this but they just begin firing right before they stop which is a terrible idea you always want to fully stop and then begin firing and if you just have a better understanding of how the mechanics of the game work in terms of you know the inaccuracy then you're going to be way better as a player now the next reason why you might be stuck at a low rank is because you don't know how to spray now this is a pretty big issue for players pretty much across all levels, so I'm just going to pretty much explain it a little bit easier for you guys. So a lot of people draw a lot of comparisons between Valorant and CSGO. They are very similar games. They have, you know, very similar, you know, economy sets and just general gameplay. But one thing that's very different is how you spray. Now in Counter-Strike, if you spray your weapon, your gun is going to have pretty much the same exact spray pattern every single time you shoot it. So if you master that, if you know the AK spray pattern, you can pretty much spray a little bit more because you understand where the bullets are going to go. So if you can just control that, then you're going to be able to, you know, spray with a weapon. In Valorant, it's a little bit simpler in one way, but more complex in another way. In the fact that for, you know, that your first few shots with a weapon is going to be a very simple spray pattern. The weapon is generally going to be shooting up a little bit and maybe a little bit to the right or to the left. It's not going to be that much horizontal recoil. All you kind of have to do is pull down your crosshair a little bit, but then afterwards, after those initial few shots, it's going to be completely completely random and pretty much spray horizontally. Now what this means in an actual gameplay scenario is that whenever you're using any of the primary rifles like the Phantom, like the Bulldog, like the Vandal, from medium to long range and you're never going to want to be spraying. Why? Because the weapon is just inaccurate and it's going to be kind of randomly shooting. It's going to be like Bloom, like Fortnite when you're just spraying, it's going to be inaccurate. I don't know why I keep comparing this to Fortnite. 25% of you guys came from Fortnite, the other 75% absolutely despise it, so I don't know why I'm making these comparisons. But the point is the majority of the time that you're going to be spraying, it's going to be inaccurate. So you have to make sure that you're always bursting from longer ranges. Yes, if they're really close, you can spray and that's what everybody does but generally from longer ranges you should not be spraying you should just try to get a feel of how many accurate shots you can get off before you have to reset your spray before it becomes you know kind of a random horizontal recoil not only do low level players have this problem but high level players had this problem for a long while when they just started getting to Valorant because it's so much different from CSGO or if you master the spray pattern you can just spray endlessly so don't worry it shouldn't take you that long to master it to understand when to tap which is pretty much from very long ranges when to burst from you know medium to long ranges and when to spray when they're really up close if you just understand that and make sure you're never really spraying from longer ranges you're going to be so much better than the majority of players at your rank. Now, the next reason why you may be stuck at a low rank is because you have bad crosshair placement. Now, bad crosshair placement plagues players of all levels, and it's one of the biggest things that stops players from reaching their potential. Crosshair placement is even more important than raw aim because in a game like Valorant, it's all about preparation. It's all about having your aim already where they're going to be. So whenever they pop out, you're going to be ready. The best way to improve your crosshair placement is just to be a little bit more aware and have better game sense and map knowledge. Whenever you're pushing into sight or pushing into a new area, always make sure your crosshair is wherever you think the enemy's head is most likely going to be. If you do this, then chances are they're going to pop out and they're going to be right into your crosshair and then boom, you get the easy kill. You don't even need to move your crosshair and you're going to be able to kill them really fast. The better your crosshair placement, the more frags you're going to be able to get, and the more frags you're going to be able to get, the less enemies there'll be to be able to do the objective. So less enemies, less bad guys, more win. Easy equation. Now the next reason is a little bit more basic and say you just don't use your abilities well. 
Invalorant abilities are incredibly, incredibly useful, and just being able to use your utility effectively is so, so powerful, especially if you're trying to take a site and your team just isn't very good. If you're an omen and you can probably just smoke off, you know, all the places where the enemies may come from at a low rank, that is so, so powerful, because especially at low ranks, players do not know how to defend against utility. What this means is that utility is even more powerful at lower ranks. If whatever agent you want to main, for example, you want to main, you know, omen, because he is pretty strong in the meta right now. Not that you have to follow the meta, at low ranks it doesn't really matter. But say you want to main omen, just understand how to quickly put down a smoke understand how to smoke you know where should i put it where's the highest priority places i should be putting down my smokes what are some just generally good flash spots like for example behind hookah when your team is going to push into hookah and how do i properly use his teleport to make plays like flex ninja it takes a little bit of time to understand how to properly use your agents but once you do you're going to be so much better of a player because honestly the utility in this game is so so powerful and it's so easy to carry once you have a good understanding of your agents now the next tip is a little bit more on the simpler side but it's so so important and it's the reason why so many people die when they shouldn't is that you just don't check your corners enough and compared to pretty much every other shooter including CSGO the player models are pretty pretty skinny what this means is that you can hide in corners and it's really hard to check if you do not fully check for it in other words you can walk into a room check the left corner and then go to the right and they're going to be in the left corner because they're so skinny and if you do not fully check all of your corners you're going to be killed at low ranks players tend to hide in just the stupidest spots and a lot of areas you might not check so whenever you're pushing into a site whenever you're pushing into any kind of area just make sure you're fully checking every area because players are very very unpredictable while players that diamond in immortal are definitely better they're usually more predictable and they just don't make as stupid decisions if you're at a low rank and you don't know how to play the game you're going to make more stupid decisions and you're also going to be more unpredictable this also means that there's just going to be so many different areas where they're going to be hiding so just make sure you always check all of your corners and fully check it don't just look over there for one second and flick away just make sure you're fully checking it having your crosshair there on their head so if they end up being there you're actually going to be able to take them out there's so many times where i've walked into a room faked checked an area yes i fake check it i just swing my view over there just check if they're there flick away but then realize there was action enemy there and they kill me make sure you're checking all of your corners so you do not die to that bronze two rays reason number six why you're stuck is probably because you only play one agent yes playing one agent is good if you want to get a better understanding of how to play that agent and if you play phoenix for 700 matches then yeah you're going to be a pretty damn good phoenix compared to someone who's only played 10 but if you only can play phoenix and phoenix gets insta locked then what are you going to do if your team already has two or three duelists are you going to still play phoenix no well pr probably yes if you're at a low rank that's probably one of the reasons why you're at a low rank but if you actually want to rank up and if you actually want to have a chance at playing against the big boys then you're going to want to be able to play multiple agents i'd recommend having one of each type so for example get one sentinel one initiator one duelist or maybe not even any duelist because especially at low ranks everybody always likes playing duelist just have a wide understanding of different types of agents so whenever your team does end up getting those two insta lock duelists and that guy who only plays sova then you'll actually be able to play brimstone and not be useless to your team honestly at low ranks i feel like team comp is even more important because if you guys do not have smokes it's so easy for lower ranked players to just push in instantly and if there are smokes up there's little that a low ranked team can do to push through a smoke or just be able to you know outwit a team that has a good team comp playing agents that are generally better at a pro level like jet like cypher is not necessary at low ranks but having a good team composition while it's not fully necessary is incredibly incredibly useful if you guys want to have a better chance at winning which is why you shouldn't be that insta lock jet Reason number seven is that you don't warm up before your matches. Now, don't get me wrong, aim is not the most important thing to have in this game. You know, crosshair placement is definitely more important. Game sense is more important. There's a bunch of things that are more important, but definitely if your aim is totally off, you're going to be just having a worse game. And the best way to remedy this is just play, you know, a few rounds of deathmatch. Maybe play an unrated where you're going for, you know, specifically headshots or something like that. Maybe you jump into an aim trainer like Aim Lab or Kovacs for a bit. I don't know what you have to do to warm up, but just make sure you're warmed up before playing a competitive match. If the first thing you do directly in the morning is just hop directly into a competitive match, match well uh you should you should probably get a job or something but if the first thing you do is jump directly into a competitive match then you're going to be using that competitive match as your warm-up and you're just going to be missing a lot of shots that you would have hit if you just spent two minutes in deathmatch i'm not saying you have to spend 30 minutes harsh aim training before you jump into a single competitive match all i'm saying is just play a little bit of warm-up before you jump into your comp match so when you actually are in that clutch situation in the middle of the match your aim is precise enough to get it done Reason number eight, reason number eight, does that, does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, it's a little bit more of an advanced tactic, but if you understand this, if you understand how to counter strafe, you're just going to be so much better than the players at your level. Being able to counter strafe isn't 100% necessary to get out of low ranks, but if you understand how to do it and you're actually good at it, you're going to be able to blaze through players and just win so many more aim duels, just because you have a little bit more of an advantage in every one of your aim duels. So if you don't know what counter strafing is, as we said before, to be able to be accurate with your weapon, you're going to want to be standing still. So if you're on the move and you see an enemy, you're going to want to be able to stop as fast as 
as possible. You can achieve this by counter strafing. Now normally to stop, all you do is let go of whatever key you're hitting. Pretend you're hitting D to go right, all you do normally is just let go of D. But we want to stop faster so we can get off an accurate shot faster, so all you have to do is just click A at pretty much the same time that you're letting go of D. So in other words, you're pretty much canceling your movement by going left when you're usually going right, and that's going to stop you a little bit faster than if you just let go of D. You can practice counter strafing pretty much anywhere, you can do it in the training mode, you can do it in deathmatch, you can do it in unrated, you can do even do it in comp if you really don't care about your rank, but I, I don't know why you're here if, you're, if you don't care about your rank that much. But the point is, all you have to do to practice is just make sure you're going one way, then hitting the opposite key so you stop, and then shooting as fast as possible just to see if your weapon is accurate. If your weapon is inaccurate, you're probably just shot a little bit early, so just practice kind of, you know, going left and right, just, you know, stopping instantly than shooting, and if you can get the hang of that, you're going to be so much of a better player and so much of a better duelist. You know, I mean, literal duelist, not agent duelist, you know, you're going to be better at dueling people, you get my point. There's tutorials all over YouTube on how to counter strafe if you want a little bit more of, you know, an advanced understanding. Heck, I could even make a counter strafe tutorial if you guys want one of those, you know, as I said, I'm a man of the people. But uh, yeah, understand how to counter strafe and the enemy is definitely going to think all you're doing is getting running headshots. Reason letter 9 that you're stuck at low ranks is that maybe you're good, maybe you're fantastic at aim, maybe you have fantastic game sense, maybe you're good at everything, but you just don't communicate. I know it seems like a relatively stupid point, but if you don't communicate, you don't use your mic, then your teammates are almost always going to be in the dark about what's going on from your perspective. If they're pushing B and you don't communicate that, all they have to go off of is what's going on in the map, and that's not really going to give them all the insight they need on whether they should rotate what they should do to help you out. You might think your teammates are bad, but maybe they just don't understand how to help you, and because that, you're, maybe you're getting baited because, you know, they think you want to be baited. I don't, I, I don't know why they think that, but, you know, they, people online are pretty stupid a lot of the times. Don't assume your teammates understand pretty much anything. If you give them all the knowledge they need to win the round, then they're going to probably win the round. I mean, the best way to give them all the knowledge to win the round is to, you know, be wall hacking and see where the enemies are at all times, but but that's that's besides the point. The point is, at low ranks, if you give your teammates the information, oh, they're pushing, oh, nobody's here, no, nobody's pushing, your teammates are just going to have so much better understanding of where the enemies are. They're going to have so much more map awareness and map awareness is so, so powerful in Valorant because, you know, Valorant is pretty much a numbers game. So if the entire team knows that they're going A because they haven't been at B or C for so long and you guys are holding good angles, then it's going to be an absolute cakewalk to win rounds. The final reason why you're stuck at all rank, maybe you have the best aim in the world, maybe you have fantastic game sense, maybe you have great communication, you know you're a car salesman who sold over 3,000 cars, you're a fantastic communicator, you have all the skills to be good at Valorant. The reason you're stuck at a low rank is because you just haven't played enough matches. The only way for the ranking system to be accurate is if you properly play enough matches for it to understand how good you are. If you only play your five placement matches and then realize, oh, I've placed at a low rank, I don't belong here, then it's going to be like, hey, you only give me five matches to understand how good you are. That's not nearly enough to understand how good of a Valorant player you are when there's so many different things that goes into how good a Valorant player is. If you don't give it enough matches, it's just not going to be accurate to your rank. That's as simple as that. So just play more matches, and if you do, it's going to more accurately represent your rank. In other words, the best way to rank up and the best way for it to represent your true rank is just to play more matches. Yes, you're going to have some bad matches, you're going to have some bad teammates, you're going to have some terrible teammates, you're going to have some really, really bad teammates, believe me, I know. But if you play a lot of matches, you're going to have bad and you're going to have good. And if you just focus on the good, if you play well, if you play to your level, you're going to be able to rank up and you're going to have the ranking system actually represent how good you are as a player. Thank you guys all so much for watching, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, or if you don't, comment if you have any suggestions, that's how this video is made, and uh, hope to see you in my next video, peace out. Also, uh, thank you for like 10k, 12k, I don't, I don't even know where we're at, we're growing too fast, but uh, thanks for the support, and I hope to see you in my next video. It's been Shakes, peace.